in this video I thought it might be helpful just to go over the basics as a primer for the more complicated video. The reason the other video is more complicated is because you're not only dealing with uh, geometry to create this effect, you also have to handle the materials. So this is the scene from the video. What I'm going to do is start with an empty scene and hold the control key down and click on the terrain. So that's created as a terrain in default grey. Now to create the shoreline effect, irrespective of whether or not you've got a, a terrain that's created through fractals in Bryce or one that's been generated in another software and brought in, the rule is that you're going to have to have a fairly level join at the water. So you can see how bumpy this is. This will cause us some problems. But let's use this as an example. So I take my terrain and all I do is copy and paste it. I edit the material so that it's quite distinct from the original material. So I've now got two terrains. I edit the terrain and I'm just going to invert it. Let's keep things simple and check out of here. And now I'm going to lower down the terrain so that at some point it's meeting the edge of my existing terrain. So this is now the water effect and there's the terrain. And what happens because this is the inverse of the landscape you will tend to get a bit more of a slope at the edge and it's that slope that we're detecting to create the effect of an edge wave as well as using material effects in the initial terrain and then letting those become visible by making this transparent the main trick is a slope in this so let's just modify this material which made blue so it becomes sensitive to the slope which is fairly easy put a blob in channel A in ambience hold the shift key down and click on the name go to basic select basic slope check out of here so now it's lighting this up where it's mostly vertical and what I want is some quite extreme slope sensitivity so I need to modify the filter so I'll go in here I'll switch the colors off because I don't need to do that click on these corner blobs till I find my filter control and then just increase the A value here and what that's doing is it's pushing the sensitivity up so that you only get a very small area which is most level areas which isn't getting affected by this filter and all this filter is doing is turning the ambience up because that's where I place my blob so that's controlling the ambience level as things stand the filter is just being played straight through this control if I want more subtle control I switch alpha scaling on and then this value now acts as a scaling for the total alpha output so that that just whoops puts me back at the situation I was in a moment ago so if I check out of here now and render this scene you can see that because of the shape of the terrain being the inverse of this terrain and because this is bumpy in the middle and flatter at the outside edge you actually get a nice response that you can take advantage of you don't have to just use the alpha you can use a material a texture which is what I do in the other video in the alpha channel so that you get more than just a response to slope you actually get some patterns generated in there so that's covered in the other video but the other key problem that you're gonna have here is mating this terrain up to another flat surface so that you don't if, if you've got your camera positioned you don't see you know, say you position your camera so you're doing this scene whatever it doesn't really matter so you're in this sort of position here and you can see now here we can see under the edge of the water so how do you solve that problem what you need is an infinite plane that meets this edge as accurately as you can achieve and for it to have a hole for this terrain to sit in so to achieve that I've still got my water selected I'll give it a, a different uh, grouping so it's easy to identify I edit and copy the matrix okay so the matrix is the scale and dimension of that terrain now if I create a cube just an ordinary Bryce cube here and then edit and paste the matrix that cube now occupies the dimensions of the terrain that I copied the matrix from and I can use that to then cut a hole in another object to make room for my terrain to do that I need to just modify a few things about this cube so I go here and I make it negative and then 
that will allow me to cut into the surface. I want to transfer the material of the negative boolean because I'm doing a boolean operation. That's fine because I'm going to make this material completely invisible. So I go into the material here, get rid of the diffusion, make it fully transparent, and then set it to burn transparency. In fact, making the diffusion zero is irrelevant because when it's fully transparent, it just really is invisible. Blend transparency being the optimum way of blending it for this particular effect because if we start using normal transparency then it's going to start calculating refraction if that's set so it's just a, a safe option there it's totally invisible so that cube is now totally invisible but it occupies exactly the same space as the terrain that is the water surface so if I now go ahead and create uh, another infinite plane I can do that by selecting my existing infinite plane copy and paste it I'll just move it to one side so we can identify it give it a new family grouping to show that it's our water surface then get the original plane uh, not plane a terrain here we go selected and I'll just save that material to the material library wherever I've got a space here so I can then reapply that material to my existing plane there so there's my water surface and then I'm gonna from the side view lift that water surface up so I'll just edit and lift it up so that it's level with the edge of my water plane. Okay, it's so level with the edge of the water plane in this case that the two are interfering. And this is why I need to cut a hole in my water surface so I can get these mated up and then there won't be a problem. That's easy to do. I go to the attributes, make this one positive. Now we've got a negative one and a positive one, so I find my negative cube in here select both of them together and group them that will allow me to have a boolean operation and then if everything's gone all right I've got the hole cut in now if you cast your mind back I did say that the bumpiness of the edge of this terrain was going to cause a problem and you can just make it out there and that's because along this edge we've got some bumpiness so it makes it very difficult to line a slightly bumpy surface up with a perfectly flat surface which is the infinite plane so at this point in proceedings, select the plane and then you're going to have to adjust its height very slightly to try and tuck it into such a position. And I don't know what it might be. You've just got to experiment. You can see, here we go. I've dropped it down and now we're seeing this edge as opposed to the back edge. So this is where the process gets fiddly. And that's, I think that's more or less unavoidable unless you can get the terrain to be perfectly flat. You can get close uh, at this stage it's so close on that edge that you can only see a very faint dotted line and if you imagine we start using transparent materials with a lot of different textures on them then it's entirely possible that that line would just disappear it wouldn't be perceivable at this distance alternatively you can try and flatten out the edge of your terrain by filtering it in the terrain lab to uh, to solve that problem but that's really getting a bit beyond the scope of what I wanted to cover here essentially your basic building blocks for this effect are select the terrain copy it invert it move it to a position where you want your water effect to be make it respond to slope get your materials applied and then copy the matrix and create a cutter cut that into another infinite plane that you arrange so that the height of the infinite plane matches the height at the edge of the water where your terrain is when you've got them cut then it'll allow you to mate the two up and then you just need to try and arrange it so that it's a good enough match so that it becomes invisible when you render I don't know whether that sounds easy or complicated uh, the process itself is fairly straightforward the bit where it gets difficult is matching that's where you are really tested so there you go uh, that's uh, essentially the end of the video if you want to know more about this process then there is the main video to look at and if you didn't really understand the main video I hope this has helped make that a bit more clear okay then cheers now